Raider Nation is never shy. You ask, we answer. It's time for the Raider Nation mailbag. What's on your mind, fam? Drop us an email at mail at silverandblacktoday.com. That's mail at silverandblacktoday.com. Now, it's your time to speak up. All right, that's right. We're back. We're here with the mailbag. Always fun. Got a lot of stuff, Mo. We're going to have to roll through these because we got, uh, what, six calls? Seven. Seven. This means if I start rambling, if I start rambling, it means you got to tell me to shut up. Yes. I will do that. You can, you can do the same for me. We'll keep each other. We got we got some some usual suspects on today's show too. Uh, repeat callers, a surprise caller uh, as well. Some girl named Monique. Stop it. I, I I don't know. She says she knows you. I don't know. Stop it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> having fun. Having fun. All right. So let's roll with this. We'll get to the calls um, and uh, great stuff coming up. Okay, first up is our buddy Nodak Raider, who I believe is in North Dakota. So he's freezing his ass off. You nice. know that. You get, he's got to be. But anyway, here comes Nodak Raider, our first call up on the Raider Nation mailbag. Oops. If Nodak- it would help if I... Crazy offensive idea. Oops. Cliff Kingsbury is offensive coordinator. Russell Wilson is quarterback. This will stir the pot. Cliff Kingsbury is an easy offense to know, understand. It's a college offense. Russell can handle that. Russell cheap. Signed to a league minimum deal. The rest of his $40 million contract is paid by the Broncos. Signs for one or two years. You draft a quarterback, J.J. McCarthy. He's young. He's 21. He'll be 23 if you sit him for two years. Do the Jordan Love routine. He becomes your starting quarterback in two years. Devontae may not like that idea, but we need a quarterback for the future, not necessarily this moment, if we want to win Super Bowls in the future. Thanks. All right. There's no Dak Raider. I don't know that I agree with anything he said there, but I respect it. Thank you, no Dak Raider. You love it? He he touched all the third rails with that quarterback plan. It was awesome. Raider- why, do you think, <laughs> why do you think I played it first? <laughs> Russell Wilson is a polarizing quarterback target with the Nation, and so is J.J. McCarthy. And then also <laughs> Cliff Kingsbury, people push back on that. So he touched every third rail with his plan. Though I love I love the fact that he goes out, he went out there and put out his idea. I yes. I will say did his research. That's not, right. And he did he definitely did his research on this before yeah. he made the call. So shout out to him for that one. Yes. It's not a plan that I would implement personally, yeah. but I like the fact that he came on here with a plan. And and I will say this, that while I said in the second segment that Russell Wilson is not a fit, that's not to say the Raiders, they may disagree with my opinion on that. They may they may right. think he is a fit. So I, I'm not going to write off the Russell Wilson thing. I just don't see it happening. I actually like Cliff Kingsbury as an OC. A lot of people say he failed as a head coach in, in Arizona, and as, as I said on, on the X. Some 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 guys just make a better offensive coordinator than they do head coach. Yeah. Let's also remember that the Cardinals did be did become a playoff team on his watch. So he wasn't terrible. Mm-hmm. It didn't last long for him, but his offenses were pretty good in Arizona out there in the desert. So I don't I don't dislike the Cliff Kingsbury idea at all. Um, yeah. As I said, I question Russell Wilson's fit. I'm not a big JJ McCarthy guy. Me I either. will dig deeper into his film and give a full you know full assessment of him. But what I do worry about with J.J. McCarthy was, as I said in the second segment, or in the first segment, just because a quarterback doesn't do something in college doesn't mean he can't do it in the pros. But you do question, you know, can he carry an offense? Now, you're probably saying he doesn't have to carry an offense if you have a strong run game. But in Har- and with Jim Harbaugh at Michigan, had a strong defense. Raiders have a pretty good defense. And he had a run game there. So you wonder, you know, how much can he do in an offense? How much can he handle – now, I know the caller said that with King, Cliff Kingsbury, he has a digestible offensive system Then in, in, in the, on the collegiate level and in the pros. So you wonder how much J.J. McCarthy can do. I will say that you're going to like his his physical tools. J.J. Yeah. McCarthy can move. Yes. Yes. He has, you know, he has the talent that he's he's the prototypical modern day quarterback. And a lot of some teams are going to like that. Yeah. And I think, too, the one thing with Kingsbury and I agree with Nodak Raider on that one is that. um you know, a lot of folks are out because to your point, and this is so important because you got, I think people look at things and they look so myopically. So yes, Cliff Kingsbury failed as a head coach. 
that has nothing to do with his offensive mind. He didn't right. fail in Arizona because his offense was terrible. Now, if that happened, I'd, I'd understand you having that point of view. I even brought up Johnny Manziel because he, he was his offensive coordinator the year Johnny Manziel won the Heisman Trophy. And I got, Manziel sucked. Yes, in the pros he did, but that, <laughs> but that has nothing to do with Cliff Kingsbury. When he was his offensive coordinator, he won the Heisman <laughs> Trophy. <laughs> So you're going to tell me that Cliff Kingsbury had nothing to do with that? BS. He did. So anyway, and again, we talked about a lot of coordinators and that. But no, Dak Raider, thank you very much. All right, got to move on, Mo. To your point, we're both getting diarrhea in the mouth. This guy, this is a guy who I'm worried because I think he's stalking me. So here we go. Uh, hey, Scott and Mo. My name is Murph. I'm a big <laughs> fan of the show. Uh, first time, long time. <laughs> and I just wanted to call and say that there is a <laughs> massive debate amongst Raiders fans on the social medias where typically arguments go to like just live forever, right? Because no one ever just agrees with each other and gets along. And also no <laughs> one's ever changed their mind on social media based on someone else's posting. But anyways, I digress. Yep. There is a large debate going on to wow, wow whether Raider fans are rooting for the Chiefs or we're rooting for the Niners. And while <laughs> oh, all of us gosh. can agree, certainly we're rooting for neither of them. It seems to be that there's a large contingent of old school Bay Area folks that uh, that are rooting for the, the the Chiefs to win. I I'm not going to tell any fan how to fan, and it's everyone's prerogative who they root for. But even as an old Bay Area Bay Area guy myself, I'm going to be well. I'm not rooting for anybody, but I'll be rooting for the Chiefs to lose just because we hate them so much. But <laughs> I come to you with a little bit of a silver lining. I'm thinking it may not be the end of the world if the Chiefs do win. And the reason why I say that is that rarely do players and coaches get a chance to call their shot and walk off into the sunset. And wouldn't it be amazing if Andy Reid and Travis Kelsey <laughs> packed it up and went to the house after winning the Super Bowl? So as unfortunate as that may be, it would spell good things for our chances in the league and in the division going forward. We already know we can beat them at their best but it would clearly give them a disadvantage versus the rest of the league and the rest of their schedule. So anyways, I'm going to go crawl back into my dark hole of depression. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I've not watched the NFL for at least a couple of weeks. So oh. my blood pressure can chill out. Okay. Love you guys. See you. Bye. All right. There's our buddy Murph from Raiders fan radio. You can always, you, you can always count on Murph to bring you the positive side of almost anything. Uh -huh. And that's that's why we love him. That's why he does our post game show with us during the year for the Voice of the Van segment. So, uh, I go ahead. I I almost sent out an SOS for Murph because I didn't know where he was going with that when he said the, the silver lining to the Chiefs win. I was like, somebody needs to check on Murph. He's, he's talking about <laughs> silver linings for a Chiefs win. I don't know uh, where this is going, but he that's but he the brought only it one. back and he and he and he and he made a point that a lot of people are talking about that. Maybe Andy Reid and Travis Kelsey right off into the sunset if they win the Super Bowl. Because what more does Andy Reid have to prove at this point if he does win another Super Bowl in Kansas City? What right. more does Travis Kelsey have to prove at this point? Seven straight seasons over a thousand yards, four time All Pro, multiple Super Bowl rings. They can both say, "Look, you know this run was is, was our best run because a lot of people doubted us. Instead of being the favorites." We had to go on a roll for the first time. We were underdogs in our last two games. This is the way we want to go out. We, we we overcame a lot of the naysayers. We have nothing else left to prove. We have nothing else left to show. We're older in our careers. We could just walk off. And I will say that would be that would be great for the division because you're taking away you know a, a future Hall of Famer, two future Hall of Famers at their respective positions. But I will say you still have to deal with Patrick Mahomes. And yes. depending on who the offensive coordinator and head coach uh, will be, uh, still you'll still have those battles. But I agree with Murph. It, it would be less of – I will say that Raiders fans wouldn't miss Travis Kelsey running wide open for another 25-yard pass down the middle again. No. No one's no one uh, consistently has been able to contain him. So there you go. All right, Murph, thanks, man. We appreciate you, and we'll see you uh, next week on Raiders Shout Fan Radio. Or when you guys do a yes. show, they, they do it less frequently during during the offseason, which you can understand. So, all right. Next is our good friend. You and I always go back and forth with him on on X, and that is our good buddy, Rock Raider. What up, uh, Ms. Tomo? What up, LB Gully? It's your boy, Rock Raider, 585. I just had a quick question. Do you think it would be a foolish move for them to wait for Clint Kubiak for the San Francisco 49ers or 
or make a rough decision to get an offensive coordinator so they can get the ball rolling. Me, myself, personally, I, I would love the, the Kubiak hire. I would, anything Shanahan, we, if we can get on offense, the Raiders, I think that would be, that would be amazing, especially with all the weapons we have. But that's the only question I have for today. I just want to say what's up to my boys, my guys, and this guys have been working so much that I really don't, really don't be interacting with you like you used to, but I'll still be listening to every show. Y'all take care. Rock Raider 585. All right, there you go. Love that guy, man. He works his butt off. And hey, yeah. all good, man. You got you got to provide for you and yours. So uh, that's that. Never need to explain that. And um, always, always. Good. And he brought up a good point there, Mo. To me, which is, do they wait? I think. I think. Look, my philosophy. This is a life philosophy, not just football. Okay. Never make choices just because you need for expediency. Right? There are some choices in life you have to make. You have a decision, split decision. You got to make it right there. But in this case, I don't think so. If they really like Clint Kubiak and they want to wait to meet him, yes, they run the risk of losing other people. But guess what? If that's the guy you're really interested in and you can't move on without first talking to him, then you got to wait. First of all, I'll say Rock Rock Raider 5 and 5. We, I got to get you back up to New York because you lost your New York accent. You sound <laughs> Southern, bro. I, you, we got to bring you Uh-oh. back to... We got to bring you back to Brooklyn or the Bronx. We got to get you a New York accent back. That's number one. But shout out to you. But uh, no. But in all seriousness, I, I think it's a good question simply because, as you said, do you wait with the with the with the risk of what if Clint Kubiak doesn't want the job? What if you interview Clint Kubiak yes. and he's not interested? He wants to do. He wants to go in another direction. And Van Pelt and Kingsbury, you know, sign up for jobs elsewhere. Then what are you going to mm-hmm. do? What's Plan B? So I think when in this case. It depends on how much the Raiders want Clint Kubiak. If he is Correct. their number one by a wide margin, then you wait mm-hmm. for that guy to, to come open because if you know you don't want to have the hindsight of what if we had just waited for Clint Kubiak? Because if he goes somewhere else and he's super successful, then you're like, we we had that guy at the top and we let him go because we were hasty. So I think if if he is their number one, you wait for you wait for him, you know, to to handle his business in the Super Bowl. If he's not and he's maybe you know, one B to Van Pell, one B to Cliff Kingsbury. Then you pull the trigger and you hire one of the other two guys. But it's going to be an interesting decision because I'm sure they're that those are the three guys we talked about. And of course, Luke gets he's in the discussion as well. But I'm sure the Raiders have other offense coordinators they're considering just in case mm-hmm. they are targeting Clint Kubiak and he doesn't want the job. Yeah, but very important role because the Raiders' yeah. offense has been broken, extremely yeah. broken. So they've got to fix it. Okay. We're moving on at Rock Raider 585. Thanks, man. We appreciate you. Appreciate you calling in. Get you it's, back to Brooklyn, bro. <laughs> Brooklyn. Back. Hey, come on now. Okay. <laughs> so then we go. Now we're going back out to the West Coast. Victor in the Central Valley. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, this is Victor here from the big Central Valley, California. Listen, uh, I was wondering if uh, the Raiders might be targeting a quarterback in the first round, maybe the second round. And now that we have Tom Telesky as our general manager, do you think that he might pick up somebody like a Justin Herbert style? And if that's the case, uh, who would this quarterback be? I would uh, see if you guys would like to comment on that. All right. There you go. Victor from the Central Valley. All right. Appreciate you calling in. And yeah, I mean, we talked about it earlier in the show, but I think that yeah, a Justin Herbert type quarterback would be fantastic for the Raiders but I think that's why we look at the guys in the draft this year and I I look at like a Bo Nix I mean he's not Justin Herbert of course he he doesn't have the same intangibles but he is a very talented guy I think that's the kind of guy that you see or that at least from our projections based on the earlier discussion Victor that uh, that we see in in a Raider uniform if they go in the first round so what I think Victor's asking is, do you, do we think that Tom Telesco has a type? Because we hear certain general managers have a type of player yep, they yep. want at every position. So I, I guess he's asking, does does he have a type of quarterback that he likes? And Justin yes, Herbert's, it's functionally mobile. <laughs> yes, because that's what Justin <laughs> Herbert is. <laughs> right. Justin Herbert is also a big quarterback. Big uh, yeah. He, not necessarily. I think a lot of people assume that he stretches to fill the ton with a big arm. Mm-mm. Didn't do that a lot in Los Angeles. But the athletic profile, you could see he's he's a modern day type of quarterback who can do it all if necessary. And I think if you're looking at quarterbacks in the draft where the Raiders are going to be picking, there's no Justin Herbert that's going to be available at at 13. Nobody's uh, six now, six. 
Right. So you I talked about Joe Milton, who has a big arm. He's 6'5", about 250. Uh, as far as another uh, day two quarterback, Spencer Rattler, who had a better tenure in Oklahoma under Lincoln Riley. As I said, I, I should have said his first year in Oklahoma was probably his best year, but erratic. But he doesn't have the stature. Uh, he's a, he's a more of a slender quarterback, I believe about 6'1". So there, just to look at the quarterback list this year, there are a lot of quarterbacks on the slender side. Even Jaden Daniels, when you yeah. talk about when the discussion comes about about Jaden Daniels, the knock against him is, oh, he's slender. He's about 185. We'll see when he weighs the combine. But to, to answer Victor's question, uh, you could get the athleticism of a Justin Herbert where the Raiders are picking, but not necessarily the size and the athleticism combined. I, I think Justin Herbert is is – is Justin Herbert. There's only one Justin Herbert, of course. When it comes to the profile of the quarterback, it'll be hard to find that where the Raiders are picking. But I will say, Tom Telesco got Justin Herbert from where? Oregon. Oregon. Where does where Bo did, where is Bo Nix play right now? Yeah. Yeah. Oregon. You don't scout, you don't scout the school, you scout the player. But I'm just saying <laughs> he was willing to dip into that Oregon pool before. Let's see if he's willing to do it again. Correct. And I mean, you look at, to your point about a Justin Herbert, I mean, that size, Minton's the only guy, Milton's the only guy that is close to that size right. in this class. But mm -hmm. you look at Bo Nix, Bo Nix is basically, I think he's an inch shorter, but he's about the same size as CJ Stroud. And I would say build wise, CJ Stroud might have a little more beef on him. Uh, yeah. but, but not close. I mean, but I should say it's close. So I think they're, they're comparable, not talent wise per se, but, but size wise from that and the mobility wise as well. Right. Cause CJ Stroud is not a running quarterback and neither is Bo Nix. Although Bo Nix can run, I think a little better than CJ Stroud actually, but he also, uh, can move around in that pocket and create. So great Victor, great call. Now we go back out, uh, to the, the frigid Midwest, and we're going to talk to our good friend, Dominique, in St. Louis. Dominique is always on the YouTube channel having fun in the chat. So here he is. Hey, Scott and Mo. This is Dominique from St. Louis. Uh, appreciate all you guys do. Appreciate your honest and realistic views. I got a pro uh, quick solution, I think, to the quarterback position. Let me know what you guys think. First and foremost, of course, keep AOC on the roster. Um, secondly, I would like to do everything possible to <laughs> trade up for Jaden Daniels. Um, thirdly, I would like to bring in a vet. Um, that vet I would bring in is Marcus Mariota. Uh, hmm. Hear me out. He's not a scrub. Uh, he'll be cheap. Uh, he signed for a one-year deal uh, for $5 million before this year with the Eagles. So I, I think we can get him cheaper than that, maybe three and a half, four, four and a half million. He'll be a great locker room guy. Um, he's a, he can be a great mentor. Um, he will push these guys. I say let all three of these guys compete. Uh, he's only 30 years old. Uh, he's mobile. He started games in this league. He's had success. Uh, I know it was a long time ago, but in college, he did play in kind of a spread air raid offense. Uh, I know we're talking about getting Cliff Kingsbury. Uh, but let me know what you think about that. Have Marcus Mariota, Jaden Daniels, and ALC. Let all three of those guys battle it out. Uh, may the best man win. Uh, but just let me know what you guys think about that. Uh, thanks. Talk to you later. All right, Dominique St. Louis. Appreciate the call, man. Uh, send some emos. Uh, but listen, so you look at his point of view here. So we talked about this earlier in the show about a veteran coming in. And if the Raiders did move up and get a Jaden Daniels, then the veteran you're going to have behind him, if you couldn't get like a Justin Fields, which I still am a fan of, at least trying, then somebody like Marcus Mariota, I know he the relationship he had with the Raiders was the was was under the Gruden regime. Um, would be interesting. I'm not saying that he is a guy that's going to come in and start for you per se, but for all the reasons Dominique said, the cost, the leadership, of course, the Hawaiian community in Las Vegas is massive. You guys know that from the first time he was there. Uh, what do you think of Dominique's uh, little plan there? So I'm going to put on my tinfoil hat for me <laughs> with Dominique's theory. Now, while I I, I paused when he mentioned Marcus Mariota, but I will say I'll, I'll connect it to this. There have been people in Philadelphia who have DM'd me, messaged me, and said, hey, what's going on with these Ch Kelly rumors that the Reds may be interested in Chip Kelly as an offensive coordinator? It apparently has been talked about over there in, in, on Philadelphia radio. Mm. And I will say, who did Chip Kelly coach at Oregon? Oh, I forgot. In 2012. 
Marcus Mariota. So yeah. if the yeah. if the rumors, if there's something to these rumors and Chip Kelly becomes the OC of the Raiders, I could see him reuniting with Marcus Mariota again. It was yeah. only one year they were together in 2012 when that team went 12 and 1. But here we go again. We're talking about another Oregon quarterback yeah. coming to the Raiders. And I and I if I were to put on my tempo hat, because I while I don't see Marcus Mariota, I understand Dominique's logic though mobile quarterback he's he's going to be a backup he's not going to be your solution mm -hmm. at the quarterback position long term obviously but just a, a mobile quarterback who can get you through and fill you in and push Aiden O'Connell I you know fine I'm totally fine with that yeah but I I just decided to take Dominic's theory a step further and I just put on my uh my tip my tinfoil hat to say what if the Chip Kelly rumors have something to them and then if 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 they do, then you can see the connection. You can connect the dots between he and Marcus Mariota. Yes, and and the Chip Kelly conversation has been out there. We haven't talked about it a lot because it is it is complete rumor, right? But right. but like you said, your Philly folks are hitting you up about it. There's yeah. some other people who've reported. Oh, there's a secret candidate. It's like we all know who that is. Like it's not a secret. We know who it is. It's Chip Kelly. <laughs> um, and so if that's going to be Chip Kelly, fine. Chip Kelly leaving UCI, it'd be really interesting to me. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't see it happening, but you never, I mean, people make crazy moves all the time. I say crazy, not in a bad way, but, you know, decide to disrupt themselves and do something different with their career all the time. So if that happened, yeah, it's a good, good connection there, Mo. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Dominique. We appreciate it. Now we go to our good friend, Tarek. We'll see where he is now because he travels a lot on business. I'm going to say he's somewhere in the center of the country from Dakota to Texas. I don't know. We'll see. Good evening. Scott, good evening, Mo. This is Tarek checking in with you guys in Lubbock, Texas, here this week for work. Uh, the one thing I dreaded was the Niners uh, and the chefs meeting in Allegiant Stadium, especially the chefs. I mean, Super Bowl 58, you got to tip your hat to both those teams, especially Kansas City, four Super Bowl appearances mm -hmm. in five years. Antonio Pierce, man, you got your work cut out for you. You're in a division with some big league head coaches, Andy Reid, now Harbaugh, Sean Payton, uh, I do I do anticipate the Raiders coaching staff will be rounded up by the end of this week. I do like the fact that Antonio Pierce is relying on some proven veterans such as Marvin Lewis and Tom Coughlin, and it does seem that, like the Raiders are having um, a different type of approach to their front office. They're bringing in a lot of consultants like Richard Seymour, et cetera. Um, I want to get your thoughts on what you guys think about the, uh, the quarterback position. I mean, we've got to get it right, especially considering how heavy – the AFC is with great quarterbacks. Uh, there are so many multiple approaches. There's the route of free agency. You got Kirk Cousins, uh, Justin Fields, Russell Wilson, um, and then obviously, um, if you if you forego the free agency period and put all your chips in, in, on the table for for um, a quarterback in the draft, there's a lot of rumors that Jaden Daniels is, is going to be heavily connected to uh, the Raiders. He has history with Antonio Pierce as well as Marvin Lewis. Um, guys like Mike Mayock have the t Raiders taken a defensive player uh, with their 13th overall pick. Uh, but we got to get it right at the offensive coordinator position, um, and we also have to get it right with the quarterback position. Um, I want to know uh, what you guys think about what the most sensible approach is going to be with regards to acquiring a quarterback. Again, they can take a free agent quarterback as well as draft a quarterback and groom him for a year. I could easily see a scenario where Russell Wilson uh, comes to Vegas um, I think he would be an upgrade, uh, obviously, over what we've had. Uh, so would Fields and Cousins, to be honest with you. So let me know what you guys think about the quarterback situation. Uh, have a great week, and I look forward to your show uh, later on this week. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. All right, there you go. Uh, Tarek, appreciate your call, man, as always. And I know, and, and you're probably hearing your call now and saying, well, they already talked about this. But just to reiterate, I think I think he's on the same page we are, which is, yeah, you might throw some different names out there, but draft a young quarterback, get the best one you can, Go either sign a free agent or trade for one, i.e. Justin Fields, uh, and keep AOC, and then just let the three of them go at it, Mo. Right. May the best quarterback win the competition at training camp. Just an open cop, And that's why I'm I'm on board with, as, as Stark said, bringing in a veteran and drafting a quarterback. Just because yes. you trade for a veteran or, or sign a veteran doesn't mean you're not drafting a quarterback. I want to make that very clear when we talk about acquiring a veteran. It's Correct. not one or the other. You do both. Mm -hmm. And you just have them all compete. And again, best quarterback wins the competition. So I'm on board with that. He also brought up Russell Wilson, who our, our previous uh, callers and people have, have brought up. That mm -hmm. seems to be a popular name right now. The other thing about Russell Wilson, I'll say, is he's used to being a starter wherever he's been, right? The unquestioned starter. Unquestioned, how yes. would How would he feel if he's coming into a situation where the team will likely – 
most likely draft a quarterback and he's going to have to be the bridge guy, which means his time there isn't necessarily guaranteed to be long term. Is he going to be OK with that or does he want to go somewhere where he is once again the unquestioned starter? I think that's one point that we need to bring up that needs to be discussed, because as much as as you could say, yeah, he's an upgrade. He's got to want to like the situation as well. So if he can go somewhere where he doesn't have to look over his shoulder at a rookie quarterback, he may choose that team over the Raiders, especially if he believes or thinks the Raiders are going to draft the quarterback early. Because you assume when you draft the quarterback in the first round that that quarterback could start at any moment from his rookie year to his second year. So right. Russell right. Wilson's runway could be very short it, if he goes to Las Vegas. The, the other thing, too, and, and I, I hear this thrown out, with Russell Wilson all the time. And then we'll close on this one. And we'll get to our last call, which is, okay, he's going to get all that money. He's going to get released from Denver. He's going to get all that money. So he'll take the league minimum. <laughs> Who says? If there's four teams that want Russell Wilson, you think he's good. The league minimum is 1.65 million for somebody, a veteran of his experience. Okay. So um, if that's the case, why would you think he'll play for the minimum? You think he's going to be so desperate. He's going to play for the minimum. There's going to be other teams who will sign him. Trust me. So this idea that he's going to, so then you start getting up to three, four, $5 million and you're like, well, wait a minute. If I can get to Justin Fields or I can get somebody else for that, why would I do? So let's just be realistic about the money too, because he's not going to come for a million dollars. He's just not going to do it. doesn't matter how much they're paying him. That's irrelevant. When you sit down and negotiate with a team, Mo, you don't say, well, I've got 40 million over here. Uh, so we're not going to pay you anything, Russ. We're going to give you the minimum because you're already making a lot of money. He doesn't give a crap. You're going to pay me what I am worth on the market, whatever that market dictates. If that market dictates, it might be $15 million. Mo. It it might be. And, I, and to, to Tarek's call, I, I want to say that I understand why Raider fans would be interested in Russell Wilson. If you look at his numbers, his numbers weren't bad this past year. 26 no. touchdown passes, only eight interceptions. So he, he is a serviceable upgrade over what the Raiders have right now. So I understand the draw to him. But there are, let's just understand, there are going to be some hurdles, some financial questions, some fit questions about him uh, and where he wants to go and his desire to where he wants to win. Absolutely. Well said. All right. Thank you, Tarek. Appreciate it. On to our last call. And then we got an email to get to as well. This is Andrew up in Oakland. Old school Oakland up there. Let's hear you, Andrew. Hey, this is Andrew again from Oh, Andrew. Sorry. I said Andrew. On air because I know you're tired of me. But <laughs> this whole Aiden O'Connell talk is nonsense. Um, yes, I mean, it is. Supposedly, he is super accurate. I guess I watched him play in a number of games, and I think his accuracy is okay, but he threw behind guys all the time. Secondly, <laughs> these conference finals, it, 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 it's nonsense. It's Oh, call broke up a little bit. And number three, this is not like a participant trophy league. <laughs> yeah, he's a nice guy. And yeah, we like to, you know, give everybody their shot and all of that and make him feel good and all this. Uh, you know, this isn't little league. Uh, we obviously have to get a quarterback. And there's, I, I, I can't point to any reason as to why you should have, uh, give, you know, give this guy the starting job. There's, I can't see one reason. Anyway, be good. All right. There you go. Andre, sorry for calling you Andrew at first. I wrote it down incorrectly. Uh, but Andres, always welcome to call, man. Just because you call it, you can call in every week. If it's a good call, we're going to put it on. So all good. But yes, yeah, so this is where I keep getting, and it, it seems to be, especially here on YouTube. Oh, we have O'Connell. He can start. No, no. And we like, again, we like Aiden O'Connell. We, we, he can develop into a better quarterback, spot starter who can win you games in a crunch. Okay. But he cannot, he cannot do more than what God gave him to do. You cannot suddenly become functionally mobile when you have his legs. You just can't mow. Here's the deal with Aiden O'Connell. He will compete for the position, but you're not handing over the offense to him as the yes. unquestioned starter next year. He did enough where you could say, okay, he's made some progress. He can develop into something, a spot starter, what have you. But you're not saying, oh, we're, we're good at quarterback because we got Aiden O'Connell. No way. No way. And as I said in a previous show, there are some that are pointing to the Chiefs game and saying, well, the Raiders beat the Chiefs with Aiden O'Connell as their quarterback. And Aiden O'Connell had a pretty good first game against the Chiefs, 
But I want to reiterate this. He didn't complete, complete a pass after the first quarter in that second game where the Raiders beat the Chiefs in Arrowhead. Did not complete a pass after the first quarter. He also had a clunker against Minnesota. So while he had some good moments, we cannot forget some of the some of the some mm. of the bad moments that he had. And it's it's enough of those those ups and downs that we could say he is not the guy right now. Now, can he? Is it fair to say he could compete? Sure. If he surprises everyone at training camp and is the best quarterback on the field in the practice field in the summer, fine. So be it. But you're not passing up on this year's draft class and veterans, and you know, just to say Aiden O'Connell is a guy. He didn't do enough to warrant that. Yes, and please do not compare to Tom Brady. Oh my gosh. Well, Tom Brady wasn't very good his first year. Well, his first year only played one game. His second year, he went thirteen and three. So, I mean, come on, let, let, let's be real. Good kid, good developmental quarterback. Yeah. And that's why yeah. you take a guy in the fourth round. You don't take him. Yeah. Now, sometimes it works out. You never know. Somebody hits lightning in a bottle, boom. But uh, anyway, so there he goes. All right, let's get to this last email before we shut out the show here. Um, this one says, Dear Scott and Mo, love your show, but I have a couple questions regarding your QB discussion over the past few weeks. Boy, people want to talk about quarterbacks. Um, first, you keep talking about Justin Fields, whom I like, he says, but I'm concerned that any deal and most of what I see talk about is a, a trading a second round pick or a third would limit the ability of the Raiders to move up, which require multiple first and second round picks. Unless one is willing to go forward with Fields long term, is it worth it, especially for any deal before the draft? Second, you have not mentioned Russell Wilson as a possibility of a bet to compete for the starting job. I was never a big fan of his, but... He was not terrible last year. There is no need to give up a pick by uh, by no means in the division, and we will even he will be even cheaper than Fields. Not to mention, I like the ideas of the donkeys paying most of the salary for the Raiders QB, <laughs> and he does have functional mobility, right, Mo? Um, why don't Why don't you think of this as a viable alternative? As you've mentioned, Cousins in the past. Thanks, guys, and keep up the good world. That's that's Docs. That's the emails from Docs. We appreciate your email, Docs, and. Um, so a couple things here. Number one, I'm going to go back and just push on. I'm going to start with the Russell Wilson. Nothing says Russell Wilson will be that cheap. Justin Fields, now we'll get into the draft pick thing in a second, Mo, to get your take on this, but Justin Fields next year would cost you $6 million, okay? Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson may cost you 10 So there's the money thing. We don't know how much Russell Wilson's going to be. He's not going to play for the league minimum. I don't care. That would he play for the league minimum if no one else would sign him, and I think someone else would sign him. Now, Mo, on the Justin Fields situation, second round pick, I would not be in favor of that. A nope. third round pick, I think, is a good price for Justin Fields. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about does it hamper you in trading up for a quarterback this year? No, because you can always trade future compensation. And that's the point I was going to make is that. You can all if you let's say the Raiders want to move up to I don't know eight, right? Let's say they want to move up to eight. It, it's not going to cost you a bunch of a boatload of picks to move up five spots. Now, if you're moving up to three, going to cost yeah. you a lot more. And and for the most part, when you see those trades where teams move up into the top three or top five, they're giving up future first round picks. So that'd be the first round pick in 2025. You know, a second round pick of 2025. And sometimes you see it two years down the line. But mm -hmm. I, I will say that giving up a third round pick shouldn't hinder the Raiders from moving up if they want to, because you always have the 2025 draft capital to dig into if you really want to move up to a high spot in, in the order. Correct. And to me, you give up the capital if it's the quarterback you think is going to be there for 10 years or longer. Okay. If it's a defensive end, unless it's some incredible game changer, or if it's a cornerback, no, you don't, you don't give up a lot of stuff to move up, I think. But with the quarterback position where the Raiders are right now, absolutely you do it. So I don't think it costs you as much as people think. And people, it's really interesting. People are, oh, we can't give up draft picks. Well, we don't know what Tom Telesco is going to do. Hopefully he's wildly successful. But what have the mm -hmm. Raiders done with draft picks? They've kept them. They've traded them you know, with mixed results. You, all of it is a crapshoot, folks. All of it is a crapshoot. So if you can do something to get up to get that quarterback, one of those top three guys, I'd say you do it. Now, to trade up for Bo Nix or somebody like that, maybe not, depending on what the price was. But I do think that it's worth it. And I do think that, yes, I would not go for fields past a three. That's just me. 
Yeah, I agree. I'm not giving up more than a third round pick for Justin Fields. Right. That's my limit. I'm not. I I've heard second or third. Some GMs around the league have said a third round pick. Some have said a second. Definitely not a first. But the third round pick is my limit. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, thank you guys so much for that. That's the Raider Nation mailbag. We appreciate you guys. Good stuff today, man. We had a ton of stuff to get through. A longer show. We appreciate that. Now that we're not going four days a week, it's 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 actually not bad to do a longer show. So we appreciate you guys being with us. Mo, let everybody know. I know you had your live yesterday. Let everybody know what you have coming up the remainder of the week so they can keep tabs on you. If you haven't checked it out yet, check out my latest Sports Not Pete, Sports Not Peace on offensive coordinators. Uh so I'll talk about some of the guys that we discussed on today's show, why I don't like them or why I think they are a fit or why I don't think they're a fit. And after that, it's pretty much smooth sailing. Uh, just waiting for the <laughs> Raiders to, to to give me some news to to chomp on and, and write about. But it's it's been pretty quiet on the Raider front, which means there's usually something cooking. We'll see. Uh, if something does come up, it'll be up on Sports Night. There you go. I love it. Also, uh, make sure I got a lot of great feedback on my my salary cap piece. So check that out up on sportsnot.com uh, as well. We'll we'll post Mo's latest piece as well as mine in the description below if you're watching us on YouTube, so you guys can find it very easily. That's good. I love it. All right, Mr. Moten, you have a good weekend. We'll get back right at this next week. Sure will. Be back. All right. <laughs> All right. For our producer, Mike Robbie, for Mo Moten, I am Scott Colbranson. And this has been Silver and Black Today. Don't forget, please subscribe wherever you get your audio. Also, if you're watching us on one of the video channels, subscribe, hit that notifications bell, and also leave us comments. Get in the discussion there. We certainly appreciate it. You guys have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you next week.